And hello, welcome back. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing our spoiler armorous model. Um, so in the last video, uh, we we're talking about two of the terms that pop up. One is the um, one is the turbulence. Uh, no, one is turbulence uh, viscosity production term, which we talked about here. So we always need a source term, and one of them is the viscosity term, and we talk about why why we kind of want to have an extra term in the turbulent uh, viscosity formulation and that's uh, found in here at least uh, this this part highlights where this new t squared may come out from if you substitute this uh, k equals to omega star new t into the, the the k equation of course there's all these extra terms that come with omega or, or rather omega star um, and then you have to kind of deal with those terms later on but uh, I'll kind of ignore that for now I just uh, want to show where this term comes from and of course here's the our regular diffusion term it comes from here okay so um, that's that's uh, that's what we have okay and and this is our actually this is actually our regular I guess diffusion term for the Omega model all right, so uh, I'm not going to go through all the thorough derivation. I just want you to get catch some catch some uh, idea of where these things come from. And yeah, this is our linear diffusion term. So I'll just highlight it in green. Um, yeah. Hopefully this this gives you an idea. So yeah, these these actually are important for treatment in the. Uh, uh, what do you call that in the bulk layer of the uh, fluid region okay in the bulk in the bulk layer that means uh, all right yeah, remember always there's uh, let's say in the pipe flow of uh, or boundary layer flow there will always be okay a part that's near the wall and then this part that's away from the wall and this is if this you consider the velocity profile all right if this is the velocity profile so this is the bulk region this is the wall region all right and these are the two regions so we dealt these two terms actually deal with the bulk region now we need to modify um, modify the equations uh, for the wall region near wall region and we discussed previously we discussed previously that uh, there's a log law layer of the wall and there were, there were wall functions that, that help us deal with that. But the nice thing about the spoiled Almeras model is that these wall functions are built into the main equation, the main transport equation, and uh, how uh, all, all of this is defined. So the reason why it looks so complicated here, it's because all the wall treatment is actually built into the transport equation here so let's let's follow on this uh, paper and see how see how uh, things actually develop okay so all right so you you have you have your diffusion terms and your transport terms that's how, where we kind of left off see this equation too so that's that's how the original paper was uh, dealing with this and then um, the next few lines, uh, next few paragraphs, they talk about how they calibrate the constants, which to me, okay, this is just a data fitting, which is uh, important when you develop the model. But in terms of theoretical understanding of this model, it's not as interesting as say, uh, uh, yeah, looking through, looking through, uh, thinking about the boundary layer and etc. etc. Right. So, yeah. So first we want to look at the near wall region with high Reynolds number. So now we start looking into the boundary layer region, okay, near wall region with high Reynolds number. Where is this? Okay, so if you can recall, okay, this is an interesting uh, book, uh, resource you can find online. If you recall a law of the wall, or you can go on Wikipedia as well. Law of the wall. 
you know, re re recall the law of the wall, uh, you will always have a viscous sublayer where u plus equals y plus, and then there's a log law region, and then there's something called the buffer layer. All right. So the log law region is where you start to have you know full turbulent uh, happening, and of course there's an outer layer here as well. And then the viscous sublayer is where you have laminar flow. So in the boundary layer, the boundary layer, okay. Let me do this. In the boundary layer, all right, we we have a we have something like that. Okay, so there'll be a u plus equals y plus region. This is the viscous sublayer. Then there'll be a log law region. Or maybe I don't know. I, I'm just arbitrarily drawing things. So it's not the correct velocity profile, but this is roughly what it looks like. The log law region. Okay, and then there'll be a transition or buffer layer. Okay, the transition region or buffer layer. Okay, so the log law region is where there's turbulence and you kind of start feeling the effects of the wall. So that's why in the paper, uh, in Spalak Amaras's paper, they call it the, the they call it the near wall region with high Reynolds number, meaning to say that's a lot of, um, there is a lot of turbulence here. So near the wall, uh, there is what he, the Spalak, um, the paper calls a blocking effect. So, in the boundary layer, the blocking effect of a wall is felt at a, at a distance through the pressure term. So, what is this talking about? All right. So let's say let's say you have fluid impinging on a wall. That means a fluid in a free stream going against the wall. So you won't actually um, you will actually start feeling feeling the presence of the wall, so to speak. That means that the wall, the wall here, will start to affect the velocity of the fluid at some distance away from the wall. Why? Because when you, when you have fluid that's going to the wall, going towards the wall, there will be a pressure buildup over here. Pressure buildup in this region here. And likewise, uh, we will also experience pressure changes in this log law region. Okay, so the blocking effect of the wall will be felt in the log law region. So how do you account for this? Well, after some dimensional analysis, uh, we we find they found that uh, it will look something like this. But let's let let's uh, take a look at what's in this term. All right. Okay. So um, they want they want the uh, destruction of this turbulence term, the destruction of turbulence to be proportional to the square of uh, turbulent viscosity, which is fine. Um, yeah, they want it to be proportional to the square of uh, viscosity uh, turbulent viscosity. Yeah, and then we also want it to, to uh, have an uh, effect, I mean a distance from the wall effect, meaning to say um, in the log law region or in the near the wall region, uh, we should have destruction, destruction, okay, there should be destruction of new T. Meaning to say the turbulent viscosity should start decreasing near the wall over here, but away in the main part of the fluid. Okay, so I can just delete this part. Away in the main part of the fluid, like uh, the bulk region, the bulk region. I don't want this, I don't want destruction term. I don't want it to have a destruction term. I only want it to be near the wall. Okay, near the wall. So how, how is this done? Um, what we can do is to you know, scale the destruction term. Okay, it should be 
uh, proportional to 1 over 1 over d or 1 over d squared. So 1 over d squared is being used because of dimensional analysis, but it does give you the feel that the further you are away from the wall, the less the wall effects and the less destruction of turbulence you have. And that is the basic idea behind this term. Okay, so you have this term. So in the free flows, as d goes to infinity, you've got a very big number, then this destruction term just falls away. All right, and in the paper, in the paper here, it says that uh, after a lot of testing, uh, it it shows that uh, it shows that it does pretty good. All right, let's see. Uh, Where is it? Test show that the yeah test testing shows that the model when equipped with the destruction term can produce an accurate log layer in a u plus y plus plot. Okay. So let's see. We we have these terms. Where is our construction? Yeah, we have terms like this. Okay. We have terms like this, and we have the destruction term, we have the production term, which will look something like this. And then we'll have a diffusion term as well. What does the diffusion term look like? Diffusion term will look like this, 1 over sigma blah blah blah. Okay, 1 over sigma. This, this is the linear term. Of course, that's the non-linear term that we must kind of add in. So the non-linear term is denoted CB2. CB2, okay, into nabla. Uh, new t squared. Okay, so this 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 equation actually produces a good u plus equals y plus. Okay, produces a good. Okay, produces a good u plus equals to y plus we um u plus equals to y plus plot. Given that uh, I mean. Here it says, uh, given that uh, an adequate treatment of the viscous region is done, that means uh, you have probably, probably have some suitable wall function for the viscous sublayer, VSL region. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Okay, produces good u plus equals f y plus in log law region, provided we have some suitable wall function for the viscous sublayer region. That one we don't think about it first. Okay. All right. Problem is this. Okay. So the problem is this: the skin coefficient friction is too low, which probably means that we underpredict shear stress. Okay. The wall shear stress. Okay. Let me correct that. Wall shear stress. Um. So this is over here, too, too low, and then it will, and over here it will, it's talking about uh, the destruction term decays too slowly in the outer boundary layer. You, you find it around here, okay? And you pro probably need to increase the destruction of turbulent viscosity in this area. So which area is this? Uh, it, the outer boundary layer is slightly uh, between the log law region and Okay, you have a log law region, you have a transition region. Okay, so viscous sublayer, transition, log law, you have an outer region, you have an outer region, and then you have the bulk. I mean, I kind of ignore the outer region before, but this, this is probably how they, uh, the turbulence uh, is, the layers are actually constructed. Okay, 
So um, the fact is, okay, in the outer region, this destruction term, okay, this destruction term, yeah, this destruction term decays too slowly. What does it mean? Um, that means that the destruction term here is uh, higher than it should be. All right, higher than it should be. Okay. So you need to okay no, you decrease. Sorry, you should decrease the destruction of uh, turbulent viscosity in this area. So we introduce a non-dimensional coefficient to compensate for this, and that is described by this F W over here. Okay, how how does F W work? Okay, so um, basically the idea is in log law region. Fw, this is a non-dimensional coefficient. W stands for wall, as said in the paper. So Fw equals to one, and it should help uh, dampen the. It should help dampen the uh, destruction term in the outer boundary layer. Okay, so how how was it formulated? They basically took the inspiration from the mixing length model and they decayed with the distance from the wall relation. Okay, so um, basically this, uh, this complicated term uh, uses uh, this, this non-dimensional uh, non uh, thing, this non-dimensional, um, what do you call it? Yeah, non-dimensional group. So it's a non-dimensional group. So all right. So what is this group? It's quite R, which is I think like the ratio of the mixing length scale, and then it will have a distance from the wall. Okay. So. What is this? Uh, this is just a ratio of this mixing length scale to the distance from the wall. And what they basically do is square it. And what, what are these two scales? According to here, here's the mixing length scale. L equals to square root mu t over s. So this mixing length scale is square root mu t divided by s. This one is the rate of strain tensor. Or rate of strain? No, it's not. I don't think it's a tensor. But anyway, yeah, it is this thing, this S, this strain rate. Okay. Which is uh yeah here. And then the distance from the wall. Um, what they use to represent this uh, uh characteristic distance from the wall. So it's not the distance from the wall itself, it's like the characteristic distance from the wall. We use kappa, which is the von Karman coefficient, 0 0.41 times d. And what you are left with is equals to nu t over s kappa squared d squared. Alright, so this is what they use here, which you see here. Okay, and this is used uh, over here. Wherever you see R here, wherever you see R here, um, yeah, wherever you see R here, it will represent this non-dimensional group over here that takes takes inspiration from the mixing length model by Prentel, okay, and is supposed to decay with distance from the wall, okay, so that this thing should not be too, uh, yeah, too much of a problem. Okay, so another problem with this, the problem with um, uh, defining FW like this is that FW gets too high in the bulk fluid. Okay, FW gets too high in the bulk fluid. Okay, so where does that come from? That is from here. You scroll down and uh, you see blah, 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 blah. Okay, figure, 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 figure. Okay, sorry. Should be here, sorry. Yes, it's here, it's here. Both R and FW equal to 1 in the lock layer and decrease in the outer region. Okay.
Okay, etc, etc. Okay, the step from G to FW is merely a limiter that prevents large values of FW which could upset a numerical scheme. Okay, so this is for numerical stability. Okay, upsets numerical stability. So they use another tweaking function to do that. And that is uh, this term which you see here, this complicated term. Okay, this uh, where g is equals to this. Okay, we dump it in again. So g equals to this, and then we have a damping function, which is equals to, which is equals to this. Okay, so this is strictly for numerical stability where CW3 is another wall constant. C is the constant, W is for wall, 3 denotes that is the third wall constant they talk about in this paper. Okay? So that, that is it. So this, this term prevents, uh, uh, prevents FW from getting too big. FW from getting too big and thus upsetting numerical instability uh, stability all right so i'll stop here it's about 20 minutes i'll get to more discussion in the next video thanks for watching leave a like and subscribe if you think this is helpful for you see you next time bye, -bye.